Beginner players will often ask, what's that thing that they need to do to improve? What's gonna help them learn songs quicker, learn them more easily, memorize them better, learn how songs actually work, how to work chords out by ear and improvise? Well, there's always lots of skills that have to come together, but if I had to pick one thing that was a real game changer for me when I learned and practiced it, something really important and practically useful every musician should learn, whether you're a casual player or not, that would be the chords that fit inside a key. So let's get into it. All that means is the basic chords that we can make using the notes of the key that you're in from the notes of the scale you're using. The fancy music term for that is diatonic chords and all we really need to think about is where in the scale you're starting from and what kind of chord fits. These are used in songs all the time because they're from a group of notes that we already know work together. And there's a simple pattern, a sequence of types of chords to learn that works for every key that really helps you when you come to practice. Understanding how it works is the first step, then it's something you wanna practice one key at a time so you get used to recognizing those chords and actually getting them under your fingers, making the theory more practical. Even on a really basic level, when you get really familiar with the group of chords in a particular key, it becomes much easier to learn music in that key. We're gonna start with major keys and the clearest one to learn in is C major. Then at the end, I'm gonna show you a trick to make this work for minor keys too. We don't have to learn a whole new thing, we can just switch it around a bit, so don't tune out before that part because that's really helpful. There is a common change we make to one of the chords in a minor key, I'll explain there, you wanna know about to avoid getting confused when you come across it. Okay, so in C major, we're just gonna number the notes of the scale. So C is the first note of the scale, the root, and we're just gonna number the notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then it would just start again at one. If we start a chord from the first note of the scale, we call it chord one. If we start a chord from the second note of the scale, we call it chord two, third note, chord three, and so on. So what chord should you play from those notes? Well, there's different things that you could do, but the important, most useful standard thing to start with, the thing that people mean when they just say a chord number, is the three note chords, triads, that we get by playing every other note in the scale. The chord one starts on the first note of the scale. We play a note, skip a note, play a note, skip a note, play a note. We call this playing in thirds. From here to here is a third, it's three notes of the scale. One, two, three. And then from here to here is a third, it's three notes of the scale. One, two, three. You probably recognize that as a C major chord, but we can also tell it's a major chord because of the exact spacing of the notes. If we counted all the half steps between the notes, including the black keys as well. I have a video linked in the description you can check out afterwards if you wanna learn more about building chords. Okay, so if we move this pattern up, we get chord number two. It started from the second note in the scale. It looks like the same spacing of white keys as C, doesn't it? But it's actually not if we counted all the half steps. This gives us the minor chord spacing. Chord one was major, chord two is minor. If I go up again, I get chord number three. I've started on the third note of the scale and I'm still playing every other note in the scale. I'm ignoring the black keys because none of them are in this scale. And here I get another minor chord. I've got E minor this time. Chord number four, if I start from the fourth note of the scale, I get F major. We get a major chord, it's the major chord spacing again. If we go up again, chord number five is another major chord. I've got G major this time. If we go up one more time, we get A minor, chord number six. We're back to the minor chord spacing here if you count the half steps. Chord number seven then, we get a B diminished chord. So this isn't a major or minor chord, this is the exact spacing for a diminished chord. But if that part's confusing at the moment, don't worry too much about it. The main thing I want you to take away from this is that we create these chords by playing every other note in the scale. And then we just wanna remember what type of chord starts from each number. So this is the sequence we just got. And the great thing is it's the same for every major scale. When we write this out, you should know that we often use Roman numerals. So now you'll know what that means when you see it. And most people use uppercase for major and lowercase for minor and lowercase for diminished as well, but then it has that small circle symbol at the top. Or maybe it's easier for you to remember it like this. In a major key, there's three major chords, numbers one, four, and five. There's three minor chords, numbers two, three, and six. And they're the ones that you're gonna use the most um, number seven is a diminished chord. A lot of modern music doesn't use chord number seven 
quite as much. And we know that all the notes in the scale sound good together and these are all like the harmonies for those notes. So we know all these chords are gonna fit nicely together and a lot of songs are gonna use them. Of course, songs will do other things as well. They will go out the key and do all different kinds of things, but this is the most useful thing to remember first and then you kind of build upon that. I do have a PDF available from my website which has a nice clear recap of everything you're learning in this video plus some extra stuff too and it has some nice handy tables that has the chords in every key written out for you plus the seven chords as well which is where we add on a fourth note. That's going to be a really handy learning tool for you plus buying one of those helps support the channel. Let's look at F major then and see what we have to do when we've got scales with black keys in. Knowing that simple bit of theory can help you find the chords in scales that have a mixture of black and white keys, which is a bit more confusing. I will be posting a video soon on some practice tactics to help you, but over on my Patreon page, I'm gonna start a series and every couple of weeks or so, I'm gonna post a video guiding you through each individual key, helping you practice along with me and testing you finding these chords of each key. So F major has a B flat in it. Let's number the notes of the F major scale. Now F is the root, number one. So we go through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then it would start again at one. So now we can think about this two ways. We can look at playing every other note in the scale, and we can remember just which type of chord we should play. So we know that number one's a major chord. So if I look at F and I play F major, that's gonna give me every other note in the F major scale. If I look at chord number two, two is minor. So the second note of the scale is G, so I play G minor. And that gives me every other note in the scale because remember, B flat is in the scale, not B. So it's play one, skip one, play one, skip one, play one. Chord number three is minor, so look at the third note of the scale, one, two, three, and play A minor. Chord number four is major, so I look at the fourth note of the scale, one, two, three, four, that's B flat, so I play B flat major. Look, it still gives me every other note in the scale, play one, skip one, play one, skip one, play one. Chord five is major, fifth note of the scale is C, so I get C major. Chord six is minor, so I go to the sixth note of the scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, play a minor chord, D minor. And chord seven is diminished. So I look at the seventh note of the scale, which is E, and I play E diminished, which is that. And remember, you can still picture that as every other note in the scale. Play one, skip one, play one, skip one, and the next note is B flat, not B. That's not in the scale, so we ignore it. So those chords of F aren't exactly the same chords. They never will be because they start from different notes but they're the same type of chords each time. And we get that pattern in every major scale. So when you know the notes of any major scale, if you write them out or if you picture them on the keyboard, I think it's best to picture them, then you can find any chord just following this pattern. This is a really powerful thing to understand because it really gets to the heart of how music works and how we hear it. And when you know the key you're in and what chord numbers you're using, you can then just take those chords and you can transpose them to another key by finding the same numbers in that key. And when we do that, although it's gonna be in a different range on the piano, it's gonna sound like the same pattern. If I play a two, five, one, chord two, chord five, chord one, the one is the chord that sounds like home, remember, that's the tonic. We're gonna hear that same pattern in whatever key. So two, five, one in the key of C. C sounds like home. Two, five, one in D. D sounds like home in E. Now E sounds like home. And kind of in reverse, when you're learning different songs in different keys, they may appear to be completely different every time because you've got totally different chords. But when you look at the numbers and think about how they fit inside their own key, you may realize you're actually playing exactly the same thing. It's much better to learn like this because you get so much more familiar with chord progressions, the kind of chord progressions that people use, what works, what doesn't, how each chord kind of functions, how each chord sounds, when you've got that common language to actually compare them in. When you get used to seeing and hearing the same things again and again. Okay then, for minor keys, all we're gonna do is we're gonna take that sequence of chords and we're gonna move the last two to the beginning. 
every major scale has what's called a relative minor, which essentially means it uses the same notes in a different order. After this, you can watch a video I have linked below again that explains relative minor scales properly because that's a really important thing to understand. But for now, I'll give you the quick version now so you can get it. C major uses all the Y notes from C to C. C is the beginning, it sounds like home. A minor uses those same notes, but now A sounds like home. A is now the root, the new number one. And every major scale has a minor scale that has the same notes in a different order. It's just easier to see in this key first. So if I do the same thing, starting from A and play every other note in the scale, and then I move through the scale like this, I end up with exactly the same chords as we had in C major. They're literally just in a different order. And then like before, we can repeat those chord types in any other key. So now every minor scale has this order of chords. So it's the same sequence in a different order, but now one, four, and five in a minor key are minor chords. Three, six, and seven are now the major chords and number two is that diminished chord. They're the same chords, it's just like they're in a different position because we have a new starting point. It's kind of like Return of the Jedi was always the third Star Wars film, then they made those prequels. Return of the Jedi is still the same film, but now it's the sixth film. And if you've already learned how a minor scale is built, you'll know that the third, the sixth, and the seventh note are technically flat intervals. So we'll put that symbol in when we write the chords out with Roman numerals to be clear. Again, I've got a video on building minor scales too below you can check out. Okay, here's the one thing you need to know about minor keys though. Chord five is a minor chord, naturally, fitting into the scale, diatonically, but it's really common for us to change it to a major chord. And the reason being is a five major chord gives us a nice strong pull back home to chord one. So chord five, one, two, three, four, five. If I change it to major, E minor in this case, to E major, it's gonna give us a nice resolution back to home. And the reason is that note that we've changed, we've changed G to G sharp, that note is a half step below the root of the key. And that half step gives us that pulling sound. We often want that in music, so it's a common thing for us to change that. It kind of coincides with use of the melodic and harmonic minors. Again, I've got some minor scale videos on that you can check out. I hope that was helpful. Ask me below in the comments if you have any questions. Don't forget I've got that PDF you can get from my website. And make sure to subscribe and come back and catch the practice video on this in the next one. And remember, I'm gonna be going through some guided practice videos for each key over on my Patreon page. Thanks for watching.